Hello everybody, this is Dr. Miguel Gonzalez and you've tuned in once again to Truth to Live By, the radio and television broadcast ministry of Reasons for Faith International, and International Ministries. Once again, thank you very much for allowing us to come into your homes uh, and to be a part of your week. Uh, we pray that these programs are a blessing to you and we certainly pray that they are honoring and glorifying to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, Christmas Day is upon us. So, uh, of course, we're going to spend some time considering Christmas. Last week we talked about John 3.16. Uh, it, uh, it was a refreshing study of, of that passage. Today, the title of this message is going to be Exchanging Christmas Gifts with Jesus. We're going to look at two different passages. Specifically, we're going to start with Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 through 12. Once we're done looking at that passage, we're going to go to Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. But before we do that, let's open in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your Son who was given to us as an expression of your love. We thank you for the fact that he willingly came into this world, took on a human nature, took on a human body in order to uh, die on a cross, to make salvation possible for us. May we remember the significance of this uh, uh, season. May we remember who it is that was given for us and to provide us with salvation. Uh, as we look at your word, we pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to us loudly and clearly. We give you all the praise and honor for it is in Christ's name that we pray. Well, we are going to start by looking at Matthew chapter 2, but before we go to Matthew chapter 2, I just want to uh, uh, sort of set the stage here. Uh, Christmas is upon us. We know we, we live in a day and age where uh, Christmas is nothing more than, than a commercial holiday. In fact, uh, I mentioned last week, and I'll mention it today again, uh, Christmas, the true meaning of Christmas, the reason why we celebrate the season, the real reason for the season is, is uh, politically incorrect. In many circles, we're not even allowed to discuss Christmas because it might be offensive to somebody else. Uh, people fail to understand that failure to talk about the reason for the season puts people in jeopardy from ever understanding the real significance of why Christ came uh, into the world, and that is to offer and provide salvation to all of us freely. Uh, so as we, as we try to move away from what the world has turned Christmas into, we want to once again look at what Christmas really means for us as Christians and for those who are non-believers, uh, what, how, what's, how significant it is for them. Now gifts, of course Christmas has become, like I said, a commercial holiday. It's all about gifts, it's all about uh, uh, receiving, and it's all about materialism. But do you know that even in the very first Christmas, there were gifts that were being exchanged? This passage that we're going to look at in Matthew, it's, it's, it's a well-known passage. It's a passage that is often preached on uh, around the Christmas. Uh, and we often think about, we often fail to understand that in that passage, it, an exchange of gifts is taking place, but we fail to see it because uh, we, we just superficially look at the words and, and, and read them. But let me look at Matthew chapter 2 and verses uh, 9 through 12. And this is what the Word of God says. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures, and remember that word, they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of incense, and of myrrh. Verse 12, let me go ahead and finish that, keep the context. And having been warned in, uh, in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Now, of course, you're familiar with this passage. It's talking about the, the Magi who followed the star and came to the place where Jesus was. 
uh, we always talk about the uh, gold and the frankincense or the incense and the myrrh and perhaps we have discussed the significance of those gifts but we've never realized that during that time as the Magi were giving the gifts to the Lord Jesus he was also reciprocating by giving them gifts as well. Now we we may they may not have understood that at the moment or perhaps they did divinely uh, understand by divine revelation they might have understood the significance but we don't often think about it in this first Christmas there was an ex exchange of gifts taking place between the Magi and the Lord Jesus though he had just been born and was uh, uh, nothing more than a babe uh, there are striking parallels between God's dealing with us today, His dealings with us today, and this particular passage. Now, a couple of things I want to point out about the passage that we just read. First of all, we find that it is God's w wonderful grace that led the Magi to His Son. God provided a navigation system for them to find his son. God led them by his grace to his son and God allowed them to see his son face to face. And that is precisely why we're told in scripture that once they realized who they were looking at, they fell and worshiped him. Now this is the Lord Jesus who had just been born. He's, he's just a babe. Uh, at this stage he's in a house now. He's not in the manger. They came to him after he had been born. But they realized, and, and I have to believe that they were, the true identity of Christ was revealed to the Magi uh, by God himself. When they saw Jesus, God in some way revealed Jesus' true identity and when they realized who Jesus really was, God the Son, they fell and worshipped Him. And once they had worshipped Him, they opened their treasures and gave gifts to Jesus. Now we'll talk about the significance of those gifts in a moment, but I want to look at some of the striking parallels between this story that we just read and God's dealings with us today. It is no different for us today. It is by God's wonderful grace that we ourselves are led to the Lord Jesus. And spiritually speaking, when we are led by God's grace to His Son, the Lord Jesus, spiritually speaking, we too see the Son face to face. And for those of us who have met Jesus personally, we too, when we recognize the true identity of Jesus as God led us to His Son, we too fell and worshipped the Lord Jesus because we recognize that He was indeed who He claimed to be and He was indeed who the Bible claimed He was, the very Son of God. So just as God's grace led them to His Son, so does God's grace lead us to His Son. Just as God allowed them to see Jesus face to face, spiritually speaking, God has allowed us to see Jesus face to face. And just as they were revealed the true identity of Jesus, causing them to worship Him, so God has allowed us to see the true identity of Jesus and causing us to fall and worship Him as well. It is God who by His grace has revealed the gospel to us, has given us an understanding and the faith necessary, and has given us the understanding of the true knowledge of Jesus. Now listen, they gave Him, and you know, these gifts were expensive gifts. I mean, as far as the Magi were concerned, they were giving the Lord Jesus everything they had of value. To give them gold and to give them incense or frankincense and myrrh was in essence to offer or give to him everything that was worth something, everything of value to them. It's no different for us today. Now we may not physically 
put at the foot of the cross gold and frankincense and myrrh, but we do at the foot of the cross come to a place where we ourselves give God our hearts and our souls and our minds. And in, in fact, Scripture tells us that that is the way we ought to love God. We, are ought, we ought to love God with all our hearts and our soul and our uh, uh, mind. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But listen, just as having come face to face for the Magi with Jesus Christ, though he was just a newborn babe, he wasn't. Though he was physically a newborn babe, the one who had taken on himself that body was the eternal, ever-existing God of the universe. And I believe that the reason they worshipped Christ was because they not only saw the flesh, they saw past the flesh and they saw deity. And that will lead anybody to fall in worship. Have you ever come to a place where you have seen Jesus for who He is? If you have never come to a place in your life where you have fallen to worship Him, then you have never come into a place where you have entered into a, an experiential relationship with the God of the universe. You don't see God, you don't see Jesus and walk away the same person. When God grips your heart with the revelation of the true identity of that newborn babe, you never walk away the same person. You have seen God. And it is God who precisely died for you on that cross in order to make provision. That is the true meaning of Christmas. And we're going to get to that in a moment when we talk about the gifts that Jesus gave them after they had given Him everything that was worth anything to them. Now let's talk a little bit about the gifts. Now the giving of the gifts is an expression of worship. Okay, this was not an extension of worship. They weren't doing this for the sake of giving. They gave because that was part of the worship they were giving that newborn babe. It came, listen, the gifts they gave came out of the overflow, overflow of an adoring and of adoring and grateful hearts. And that is why we as Christians worship Christ. Out of the overflow of our hearts, adoration for Him, and out of the overflow of our hearts, gratefulness for Him. We thank God during this time of year for giving us the Lord Jesus. It is the greatest thing, the greatest gift humanity has ever received and will ever receive. It's the only gift worth anything. And God gave His Son. Now gold, gold, according to Psalm 72, 15, was a gift for a king. It has always been considered, if not the most, at least one of the most precious metals. It's always been regarded as a symbol of wealth and nobility and royalty. And why would they not give Jesus gold? For the one who they were giving the gold to was the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This was an appropriate gift for somebody who was royal like Jesus. Now let's look at frankincense or incense. The first one was a gift of, de of, 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 ro of uh, a gift for a king, a gift of royalty. The second one, frankincense, was a gift for deity, according to Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 6. Frankincense, or this incense, was a costly, beautiful smelling incense. And it was only used for special occasions. Listen to what Origen, the ch great church father, said. He suggested that frankincense was the incense of deity. 
In the Old Testament, in, uh, frankincense was stored in a special chamber in the front of the temple and was sprinkled on certain offerings as a symbol of the people's desire to please God. So he was given gold, a gift for a king. He was given frankincense, a gift for deity. And he was given myrrh, a gift for a person who was going to die. If you look at Mark chapter 15 and verse 23 and John 19, 39, you will find that there. It was a valuable perfume. And that valuable gift emphasized the humanity of Jesus. For he had given himself a body so he could be hung on a cross and take our sin and pay for the penalty of that sin so that we may receive forgiveness. Those were the gifts of the Magi to Jesus. Gold for his royalty, frankincense for his deity, and myrrh for his humanity. Now what were the gifts that Jesus, what were the gifts that this newborn babe gave them? Because I propose that at that time in human history, when these magi came and gave Jesus those gifts, Jesus reciprocated the favor and in turn gave them gifts as well. Let's look at Romans chapter 5 for a moment. Romans chapter 5. And we're going to look at verses 1 through uh, 5. Romans 5. Verse 1, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, listen, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Magi gave him three gifts, and Jesus in turn gave them as he gives us three gifts. The first one, according to Romans chapter 5, verse 1, is God, Christ gave them and gives us a life that is forgiven. We are justified by faith and when we're justified by faith we have peace with God. Do you know that if you don't know Jesus today you're alienated from Him? And it is not until you come into a personal relationship with Jesus that you receive the peace of God and peace from God. So the first gift that Jesus gave in return to the Magi as well as to all those who come into a personal relationship with him is a life that is forgiven. For example, in Isaiah, and I'm not going to look at all the passages, I'll give you the references. In Isaiah chapter 53, a well-known passage uh, by most people, Isaiah 53 and verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. The first gift that we receive as we exchange gifts with Jesus when we come to him for the first time is a life that is forgiven we are given peace with God as a result of that forgiveness. The second one is spoken of in verse 2 of uh, Romans. I guess I should have kept my place. R uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 2. And this is what Paul says. Through whom we have, listen, gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. You know what Paul says, the second gift we receive from Jesus when we exchange gifts? When we come to the cross, when we come to, the, to, to, to understand who that newborn babe is, we give Jesus at that place our heart, and we give Jesus at that place our soul. And we give Jesus at that place our mind. And those are representative of the three gifts that the Magi gave him. And in return, he gives us a life that is forgiven. And secondly, in verse 2, he tells us that he gives us a life that is 
forever. We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You know what hope is a reference to here? To the return of Christ and to our life in glory with Him. Listen, have you ever considered that the only people in the world who have hope, real hope, are those who are in a personal relationship with Him. Everybody else, listen, this is politically incorrect to say, but everybody else is hopeless. Because according to Scripture, there are only two people in this world, those who believe and those who don't. And according to Scripture, there's only two final destinations where those two people go, heaven or hell. And according to Romans chapter 5, the first, first gift we receive when we exchange gifts, gifts with Jesus is the life that is forgiven. And because we have been forgiven, we now have hope. I've often said in the past that you can take just about anything away from a human being and he will manage to survive. But if you strip a human being from hope, you have taken life from that person. Only those who know Jesus, only those who have been forgiven, who have accepted that gift, are people who have hope. We hope in the return of Christ to take us to be with us, and we hope for a life in glory with Him forever. And anticipating our future with God ought to bring great joy. We stand in God's grace and the outcome of our lives is secure in His hands. I'll give you one passage, Titus chapter 1 and verses 1 through 2. Titus 1, 1 through 2. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ for the faith of God's elect and the knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness. Listen, a faith and knowledge resting on the hope of eternal life, which God, listen, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. God determined and decreed that any who would enter into a personal relationship with Jesus would, that, would have the hope of eternal life in His presence forever. The third gift, verses 3 through 5. So we receive the gift of a life that is forgiven. We receive the gift of a life that is forever. And thirdly, we receive a gift that is a life that is fortified. Look at Romans again, chapter 5. Romans 5 and verses 3 through 5. This is what Paul says. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that, this, we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. The third gift we receive is the, a life that is fortified. He gives us the strength and the love through the Spirit. Father, we thank You for this time. We give You all the glory and praise. We thank You for Jesus and for this, the reason for the season. For it is in His name that we pray. Amen.